Now, the top two seeds, 173 tries and only two defeats between them all season. We could be set for a classic Super Rugby final between the Lions and the Crusaders. Well, as you can see, Sky Sports Sean Fitzpatrick and Tina Delport join us now to preview at Tina's first of all, 14 games unbeaten, number one seeds and a final in Johannesburg. Surely this is the Lions' time to deliver for the first time. I'm very excited about the prospect of, first of all, having a final back at Ellis Park. It's mm. such an iconic stadium in South Africa with the history of the Lions and also for Springbok Rugby. So great to see the Lions in there. They've got that home final draw, which is very important for this team. They didn't want to do the travel. They want to be in home. It's a sellout. You know, the first time this season, all the supporters have come and they've shown that they are backing the Lions for an, an historic win. I'm already predicting. I know Sean will probably <laughs> totally disagree with me, but uh, yeah, no, it's, this is the Lions time uh, in terms of getting that home final and improving on last year's uh, away final that they played. Yeah, we'll come to Sean in just a second. But staying with the Lions, they've managed to pull away in the last 20 minutes for every game all season, including uh, in the semi-final against the Hurricanes. Will that, plus the home crowd that you're talking about, really ask questions, do you think, of the opposition? Very much. It's also high altitude. Um, it's quite high up in the air, so the air is thin. As travel fatigue has got to be factored in for the Crusaders. They had to fly over all those time zones to get into uh, Johannesburg. The Lions have shown over the last three games that they can come back. They were trailing in the last three matches they played. They were trailing at halftime and especially last week against the Hurricanes. After going down 20 points in, in the first 20-25 minutes, they showed that they can be resilient and restart uh, from halftime. They cannot do this against the Crusaders today. Though. They have to start the way they start at halftime in the previous games. You cannot allow the Crusaders to build 20-point lead, uh, and they're going to find it tough. So they have to start fast, and they've got to use um, their conditioning and their fitness to tire out the Crusaders. Yeah, because, Sean, the Crusaders are the bookies' favourite, really, aren't they? They've only lost once all season, and they face tougher domestic competition. They haven't won this title mm -hmm. in over a decade. How hungry are they going to be for it? I think they're pretty hungry, really, in terms of in terms of the way they've structured their season. Really, they've managed the season very well. They've got a number of All Blacks, obviously. But they've got a real glint in their eye. There's only two of the players that were there when they won their last title: um, White Crockett and, and Kieran Reid. Uh, their coach. It's his first season uh, coaching the, the Crusaders, so Scott Robinson um, is looking for a, a big game. And potentially um, where the Hurricanes got undone last week was in the tight five. I thought the forwards of the Lions were quite superb um, and it's an area of strength for the Crusaders. Um, they've got a very good attacking game, uh, they're very patient, uh, they've got a huge amount of experience, they've got the best, uh, you know, for me arguably the best number eight in world rugby and probably the best captain in world rugby at the moment, Kieran Reid. And they've got some real firepower and as, we, as we're seeing there in terms of the tries that they can score. Um, a hugely experienced tight five and that's once again an area where the Lions have proven to be very strong. But going to Alice Park, as, as Tina said, it's not an easy place to go. <laughs> I actually played in a, a Super 10 final there in 1993 actually against Transvaal, who are now who are now the Lions. So a lot of history there, and obviously '95 when the when the All Blacks lost the final there. Um, so it is a difficult place to go and win, and I'm sure it'll be a great lever because I think realistically the Crusaders are the favourites. Um, but I think uh, Ellis Park will be a great level in terms of the Lions. You mentioned the All Black Type 5, mm. Kieran Reid fit mm. as well. Are we going to get a brutal uh, battle at the breakdown against the Lions? I think that's, a, that's an area that, that definitely the Hurricanes exploited early in the match uh, last week against the Lions, and it's an area they will target. Um, and I talk, I talk about that experience, but there's a real hunger in this, in this Crusaders team to win a title. Um, a lot of All Blacks, but they've been very, very focused this year and enthused uh, to do well. So they're there, they're at the final, um, and hopefully they can uh, pull it off. <laughs> and Tina's talking about key battles. We're going to see quite a battle between the two number 10s as well, aren't we? Especially Elton Yankees. Um, He's in the quarterfinal against the Sharks. He was under a lot of pressure. Mm. He made a lot of mistakes. He totally changed his game around last week against the Hurricanes. He was on, uh, on target with his goal kicking. And also, very importantly, he controlled the game for the Lions. He controlled especially the territory very well and also the pace of the game. Mwanga is very similar to Elton Yankees, although he's not the first choice uh, All Black 10. Um, where Elton Yankees is the incumbent Springbok 10. So it is going to be a little bit about that battle of confidence. 
will Mohanga have the same experience and confidence going into a final away to control the game? Bit of a controversial decision with the referee as well. Take a paper. Uh, South African chosen for a South mm. African based final uh, and a controversial call made in the semi finals. Will that add to the layer of debate, do you think? I think it's, it's given, the, the, <laughs> you know, given the scribe something to write about. I, I don't, he's world class, and I, mm. I think the days of, of having to have a neutral referee have gone. Um, these guys are professional, they know what to do. Um, he's hugely experienced. Um, controversial call last week, I personally don't think so. I think it, you know, it was a, fair enough. It was a, they were hard on attack. Um, unfortunately, Bowden Barrett couldn't get out of the way. He pulled the ball back. That's a, you know, that's a, a yellow card um, in my eyes. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, they could have gone with Angus Gardner, the Australian, who, who's had a great super season and he's you know, a very um, you know, experienced referee. So maybe if they didn't want to have a controversy, well, well, maybe, maybe they might be just saving money. Yeah, well, if, if, if you have one of the most experienced <laughs> referees, <laughs> yeah, one of the most experienced referees on the couch say that was a yellow card, then I'm certainly it was, uh, it was uh, well justified. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, eight of the last 11 finals have been decided by eight points or fewer. They've been tight. Are we going to see the same again today? I think so. I think it'll be a very tight final. I, I, I don't think the Lions will let the Crusaders get away like they did with the Hurricanes last week. Um, I think defensively, they're both very good defensively. Um, so I'm thinking it'll be pretty tight. I'm, I'm hoping the Crusaders will win by probably six points. Brilliant. Thank you both very much indeed. Can't wait for the Super Rugby final. Thanks.